If you're looking for a new car, you're not alone. Auto sales jumped nearly 25% from this time last year. But like Dylan fans in the 60s, many are still hesitant to go electric. Times, they are a change in, and more EVs sell every year. But concerns about infrastructure, range anxiety, and high costs in a questionable economy mean demand is a slow train coming. Right now, the average price of an electric vehicle is about $66,000. The average price of a gasoline powered vehicle is $49,000. Now, yes, you can buy cars more expensive and cars less expensive. The cost of insurance is higher, and you still have to pay for charging. Lauren Fix is an automotive analyst. She says the reason insurance is higher for EVs is because of replacement costs. Don't let anyone kid you there's no maintenance because the tires wear out quicker. And anytime there's moving parts, there's going to be maintenance. And that's not just some of the fluids. You may have eliminated the engine, but you still have other components that need to be repaired. And when you total it all up, it takes about 10 years to recoup the cost of an electric vehicle over a gasoline powered vehicle. And people that are smart are looking into the numbers and saying this may or may not work for me. The vast majority are still going to choose a ICE vehicle, a gasoline engine vehicle, because it's less expensive in the price. And then that translates to lower monthly payments, whether you're buying or you're leasing. Jim Urso Marso is the vice president of Union Park Automotive Group in Wilmington, Delaware, a state that is pushing car dealers to sell more electric vehicles and even plans to phase out gasoline-fueled new car sales by 2035. We as dealers, we don't have anything particularly against or for electric cars. We want to provide a transportation solution that our customers want. What works best for them is a car that's less expensive and that will take them where they need to go, when they need to get there, without having to worry about stopping for an hour or three hours to charge and whether the charging station will be open or available and whether it'll be working. I think about 20% of the charging stations in the country at any given moment are offline with technical issues. And, and we experience that too in our dealership. It's a challenge to keep them up and running. Range anxiety, the dread of running out of juice before finding the next charging station, remains a big issue for potential EV buyers. While the national development of charging stations is ongoing, the infrastructure comes up short in the face of growing demand. What we are focused on is excellent customer service. We want to ensure that everything is working in real time and we have the support infrastructure to ensure that every charger that we deploy out there is always working. Sharmila Ravula is the chief commercial officer for ChargeNet stations. The startup is on a mission to democratize EV charging. We are focused on bringing uh, fast electric vehicle charging in very convenient locations to the entire population of the U.S. in places they live and uh, visit frequently with a very narrow focus on quick serve restaurants because these are ubiquitous across the entire U.S. ChargeNet Stations has one station currently operating between two popular freeways in San Francisco. They plan on having 25 stations operational by the end of next year and thousands of stations across the U.S. by 2035. The goal would align with the Biden administration's aim of having 50 percent of all new vehicle sales be electric by 2030. But some experts we spoke to say it will never happen. There is no way that you're going to see electric cars increase to that substantial percentage by 2030 or 2050. Will we be all electric? Not a chance. And the perfect proof is California. Here today in 2023, they can't even support all the electric grid because there's not enough wind and solar power and they need nuclear power, coal and natural gas, which California doesn't want to do. In Delaware, Ursa Marso says he sees his customers pushing back. We're hoping that, that Delaware does not adopt the ZEV requirement, the electric vehicle requirement. If you're required to buy something and it's more expensive, that's, a, that's sort of a tax increase. So we're, we're trying to explain that to people in Delaware so they can see what the impact is going to be. The average person in Delaware is not going to be very happy that they now have to spend a lot more to get a vehicle. EV companies are seeing consistent year-over-year -year growth. In 2022, more than 750,000 new all-electric cars were registered in the U.S. That's 57% more than in 2021. According to Marklines, an automotive industry portal, sales are expected to grow by another 35% this year, but they remain a small part of the total U.S. auto sales. With lawmakers calling the end of the line for gas-powered vehicles in coming decades, costs and incentives will have to align for customers to meet those benchmarks. Thanks for watching. 
In this time of media mistrust, Straight Arrow News is on a mission to bring you unbiased, fact-based reporting. So like and subscribe to Straight Arrow News below. And to see all of our content, go to straightarrownews.com.